you have an October birthday and would like to come forward for the October birthday prayers, please come forward now. All right, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on these your children as they celebrate their birthdays. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and in their grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness and bless them with your mighty love all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. As they go back to their seats, we'll get ready for our opening hymn. Beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Of God unto all of you, 
and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We will continue with the intro for today. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. It is great to continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Go on, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. I will speak your testimonies before the angels of the Lord, and shall not be your shame. Flying directly overhead, 
with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said, with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made the heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We continue with the graduate for today. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God. That you may tell the next generation that this is God our God, forever and ever. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. Since through the law comes knowledge of sin. And now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thank you. 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's kind of a unique day when October 31st falls on a Sunday. Because usually we have to move this celebration that commemorates uh, this special day for Lutherans that we call the beginning of the Reformation of the Roman Catholic Church to the closest Sunday that it falls. But we don't have to do that today. Instead, today what we have to do, because today is the 31st, is fold in our commemoration of All Saints Day in with today. The, the celebration that is actually tomorrow instead of waiting a whole extra week. These two days really belong together anyway since Dr. Martin Luther was concerned about those sale of indulgences that gave people a false hope in regards to their eternal salvation. Too many people saw these indulgences as a way of helping themselves, helping their loved ones out of purgatory to get into heaven. Instead of continuing to always and only look to God's word, which proclaims Jesus Christ alone as our salvation. So in the gospel lesson, as Jesus is speaking with the Jews in the temple in John chapter 8, they continue to remain confused by his words. They don't see Jesus as the Son of God or their Savior because they only see Jesus as a human being, like themselves. They feel they know him because they know his parents, they know his other relatives. But Jesus tells them that they really know neither him nor his heavenly father. And because of that, they will remain in their sins. Jesus has been speaking the truth of God's word to them. And some of the Jews do believe, but others do not. So that by the end of John chapter 8, and by the end of Jesus' discussion with them, the Jews are picking up stones in the temple to kill Jesus. But he hides himself from them, and he leaves the temple. The most striking words of the Jews in our reading today was when they claimed to be free. That they have never been slaves to anyone. Jesus didn't laugh in their face. Jesus didn't try to remind them about all the times that they were slaves, that they were exiles in Egypt, in Babylon, or at that very moment when they were under Roman rule. Imagine, as they were speaking these words about never having been slaves, if you could hear the trump of Roman soldiers' feet marching next door to the temple, we're not slaves of anyone. When they claim that they've never been enslaved to anyone. They claim they also love God. They claim they were his children, like many people today. Claim that they are Christian, and yet they don't go to church. I'm spiritual, but not religious. Or I go to church on Sunday, but I don't want to have to read my Bible during the week. I don't want to have to waste an hour, an extra hour, in Bible study during the week. I could have got one hour, or maybe one week, or one hour for one whole month. And that should be good enough for God. How sad it will be on Judgment Day for those people who have despised God's Word to claim that they should be in heaven. Be any different. Don't we also deny, not God's word, but deny our sinfulness in the world? We try to be good, so it shouldn't count against us when we do sin, because we really didn't mean to sin anyway. Well, that's what we're trying to tell ourselves. But that's not how God sees it. 
Just one little sin of despising God's Word, not remaining in God's Word, not studying God's Word, causes God to throw us out of heaven into the fiery abyss of hell. Let's not forget, we don't start off in heaven. We begin this life already enslaved to sin because of what our first parents, Adam and Eve, did in the garden. They rebelled against God and His Word when they took that fruit that God had forbidden and ate it like it was their very own. This is the very reason that Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, came down from heaven to save us all from sin and eternal death because we can't do that on our own. So God promised our first parents that he would send them this promised seed, one who would be born of a woman, who would crush the head of the serpent to death. The prophets continue to proclaim God's word to the people who sometimes with their stubborn ears would not listen. But they continue to proclaim that God would save them from their enemies. Jesus came teaching the truth of God's word to every sinner so that they might hear God's word. And in hearing God's word, repent. Trust in Jesus for their salvation and be saved. And this also includes you. You are one who must hear the word of God that names your sin and condemns you for it. You are one who must hear that Jesus came to take your punishment for sin and carry it all the way to the cross, dying for your sin. He pays for your sins, being treated as the ultimate sinner, the ultimate slave to sin, even though he lived a perfect life. He did this in order that you might be set free from slavery to live in God's house forever. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross is the key that releases the world from bondage to sin and eternal death and opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers, including you. How frustrating it would be as the savior of the world to tell people that you came to bring them salvation and they reject you. They reject your word, the word of God, and their salvation from sin and death. How bitterly this must hurt Jesus, even as he sought to proclaim to them the truth of God's word. They refused to listen or believe. They would rather trust in their lineage, being descendants of Abraham, imagining they've never been slaves to any other nation, than to trust that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, sent to save them from sin and give them the free gifts of forgiveness and salvation. Jesus didn't come to set them free from Roman rule or any rule. He came to set people free from the rule of sin and death. We know and believe that Jesus did everything written in the Word of God for us. We believe that He offered up His life on the cross of Calvary in place of our own. His sacrificial death and His glorious resurrection proves that He has liberated the world from sin, death, and the devil. And now all who hear the truth of God's word and believe that it is for them receive these blessings. We know that we're saved, not because of some decision that we made or that we try to be a good person as best we can. We know that we are saved because We've been baptized. And in that washing of water and the promise of God's word, all our sins are taken away. We are saved because Jesus has set us free. 
We are made pure and holy. We're made into new creatures, fit for God's eternal kingdom. Here you are again today, listening to God's word. So that the Holy Spirit is also working in your hearts, working faith. We believe God's word, not because it's logical, but because this Holy Spirit has created in you faith. Unless you believe in the word and the promises of God, you'll die in your sins. Jesus has just told this to the Jews, those very words in John chapter 8. And then he presented again to them God's word. Believe in Jesus and all these gifts of God take the place of sins in your life. You don't have to work to pay for your sins, and you couldn't do that anyway. Your sins are too costly for any one person to pay for, unless that person is both true God and true man, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Only Jesus truly sets people free, not physically, but spiritually. Our bondage to sin has been broken by the cross of Jesus Christ. No, we are no longer under our harsh master, Satan. We're set free from our slavery to sin. We've been made heirs to eternal life. There's no punishment that we have to pay before we can enter the gates of paradise and death. This freedom from sin and bondage is what Martin Luther found in Christ, in God's Word. This freedom is what we still proclaim to the world today. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Our service continues with our commemoration of the faithful departed. Would you please stand? With God's people throughout the church, we remember this day all those who have finished their race and kept the faith. We especially know this day those who have gone to the church triumphant during the days of this last year. Robert Hackney, Lawrence Esau, Mary Catherine Esau, Kyler Gillespie, Art Prevens, Earl Mueller, Maddie Herrick, Raymond Motts, Earl Robinson and Carolyn Vermillion. Let us pray. With thanksgiving, we remember these your servants, O Lord. We thank you that even as they rest in the earth, they enjoy the heavenly crown given to them for the baptism. Teach us to follow the example of the saints who have gone before us, that like them we may persevere in the race set before us and cling to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort those of us who mourn our loved ones lost this last year, and encourage us all through your word, 
that we may trust your promises and abide in the joy of your salvation. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of vision, the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. To receive our honor. Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Let's be seated. the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Same way also, he took the cup after supper, 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Let's do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand.
our guests and visitors for worshiping with us today. If you've not already done so, we would ask that everyone please sign your name on the attendance sheet in the burgundy folder at the end of each pew. Please tear the sheet out and place it on top of the folder to make it easy for the others to get them. The sign up sheet for the youth taco lunch on November 14th is on the table in the narthex by the front door. If you plan to attend, please put your name on the list so we know how many tacos to stuff. Thank you. There will be a grief sharing seminar entitled Surviving the Holidays on Saturday, November 11th at 9.30 a.m. There's a sign-up sheet on the table in the narthex. Please put your name on the list if you plan to attend so they can have enough books. Everyone is invited to a special Reformation service today at 4 p.m. at Zion Lutheran Church in Hillsboro. Pastor Letcher will have a sermon. Active seniors will meet tomorrow, Monday, November 1st. I believe it says 1.30. Is it 1 o'clock or 1.30? 1.30 is right. Meeting tomorrow, Monday, Monday November 1st at 1.30. And today is the OIF Pancake Lunch. Please join us. That concludes the announcements. Thank you. Except for the lunch prayer when you're going in there. So let us pray. Or even if you're going to go home. The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bountiful goodness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.